All right, finally, we're on to entities. Now, entities are what populate your quake level and actually make it interactive and fun. Technically, every brush in your level is an entity, but for this lesson, we're gonna stick with those entities that are things and entities that make things happen. Each entity has a class name that's referred to in the game code and the game engine. Entities are organized by class, and some of the classes, not all, uh, are world spawn info, items, weapons, monsters, lights, ambient, funk, triggers, and miscellaneous. We'll get to the others later, but these are the kind of the more common ones. Besides the classes of entities, there are two varieties of entities and maps. Point entities and brush entities. You already know what a brush is, so a brush entity is one or more brushes that has had an entity applied to it, and then it becomes something more than just geometry. It becomes interactive, or it serves some kind of other purpose in the map. So circling back to the world spawn entity, it's important to note that brushes that aren't these special types, like a funk door or whatever, are considered part of the world spawn entity. If it's a regular old brush that just sits there and looks pretty, it's referred to as world spawn. Now onto point entities. Point entities live at a single coordinate in your map, a point in 3D space. Point entities can be monsters, lights, sound effects, ammo boxes, weapons, all kinds of stuff. Information about each entity is stored in what's called key value pairs. In level editors, these pairs look sort of like a spreadsheet. One column for a category and the other for some value. For example, the class name key in this entity is info player start. The origin key stores the exact coordinates in 3D space. The angle key keeps track of where it's facing. Depending on the entity, there can be a lot of key value pairs or just a few. So in Trench Broom, to get to the Entity Inspector, you hit Control and 2, and that'll bring up the Entity Inspector. You have your key value pairs. You have a little description area here of the different class names. And then you have the most important thing, which is the browser. So at first they're alphabetized, but you can also group them by type. So here we have all the ambient, which are basically sound effects, looping sound effects. Here we have all the info. Uh, there's the player starts for deathmatch and co-op. And then there's some special cases here that we'll get to later. Items, you know, all that stuff. So you can look at it two different ways. You can also search for them down on the toolbar, as you know. Um, so we'll go to Army, Monster Army, and we'll drag him in. You can see what you've used in the map. So there's more lights than anything in this particular map. So that's gonna show up first, and then there's an info player start. So that sometimes can be useful to group that way. Also, you can filter only the used items, so literally only the entities that are in the map. So when you select an entity, you can see all the different key value pairs, and there's the default properties, and these are grayed out because they're just set to the defaults. These mean that they've been edited or are most commonly edited. So the most important thing about this is that you can add a key value pair. Just select any of the fields and hit Control Enter, and that'll add a new property. So I'm gonna add the color key. The beautiful thing about that is it brings up this custom kind of uh, color picker, and I can make this a sickly green light. Now we're not gonna get too much into lighting here. So in order to delete a key value pair, highlight the row and hit delete or backspace. So to navigate through these key value pairs, much like a spreadsheet, you'll hit tab, and that will kind of cycle through the different fields. You can also hit shift tab to go backwards. If you hit the numpad enter key, it will go straight down one of the columns. So now I'm going to make a brush entity. So I've made this brush and it uses the trigger texture and you're gonna wanna do that with triggers. So I'm gonna highlight this, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make not a point entity, but a brush entity. So I'm gonna make this trigger and trigger once. So now it's become a brush entity and when I hit escape, you'll notice that the brush is translucent. That's how you can quickly spot a trigger in a map, it's translucent. Let's say you don't need this to be a trigger anymore. You can right click and select move brushes to world. And what it should say is move brushes to world spawn, because as you can see up here, it's now part of the world spawn. But we're gonna go ahead and keep it a trigger brush for right now. 
Hello, where is it? Trigger wants. You might have noticed when I right clicked, you can also place point entities right directly inside the uh, map with that right click menu. And that's kind of fast actually. So let's get back to this trigger. What's gonna happen is when the player crosses through this trigger or activates, it's gonna be like a tripwire. So I'm gonna compile this map and show you really quickly the behavior. So now I can shoot over there, I can jump, make noise and everything. And he's gonna see me and then attack. So in that case, he had to see me before he was triggered but I'm going to actually make this trigger once. I'm gonna make it so that the player has no chance of avoiding the trigger. We're gonna get into targeting in a lot more detail, but I'm just gonna kind of give you a sneak preview of it. We've gotta give this guy what's called a target name so that we can trigger it. And that's one of the default properties here. So we're gonna just call him, let's call him Joe. Give him a name, there's Joe. And we're gonna make a target of Joe in this trigger once. And as you can see, there becomes a link between these two options. Now the number one problem with targets and target names is confusion. I get confused all the time and type in the value and the incorrect key. So target and target name, just pay really close attention to what you're doing. At. Just remember it this way, a trigger needs something to target because that's what you're going to put up here. We've, we're targeting Joe. And a target needs to have a name, right? So target name Joe. So now I'm gonna compile this and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when I trigger Joe. Now I'm gonna walk this way and you're gonna hear Joe freak out because I've triggered him. He is so triggered. So that was just an introduction to entities. We're gonna do another tutorial where we go into a lot more detail and I'm gonna show you all the most common triggers platforms, teleporters, all that jazz. So that is coming soon. Thanks for hanging in there. We'll see you in the next tutorial.